is a person wielding that weapon. You know, Cain killed Abel. You know, and uh, you know, and that's the problem that we have. And I said, what we need to do is look into how we can stop those things. You know, he talked about doing a disinformation. What about getting a department that can look at young men that's looking at uh, women that's looking at uh, just social media? What about doing that, looking into things like that, and we can stop that that way? But yet they want to just continue to talk about taking away your constitutional right. <laughs> what? What is Herschel Walker talking about? That, ladies and gentlemen, is who the Republican Party elected to be their Senate, their Senate candidate. Uh, and also, he's the GOP's poster child for the latest fool spewing nonsense. He'll be squaring off against Senator and Reverend Raphael Warnock this fall as control of Congress hangs in the balance. Meanwhile, Stacey Abrams will be facing Governor Brian Kemp in November's election, a deja vu from 2018 showdown. And in the words of Pastor Troy, ain't no more play in GA. The question is, are the voters ready? So joining me now is Washington correspondent for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, making her cross-connection debut, I'm proud to say, Miss Tia Mitchell, glad to have you here. And on set with me is Latasha Brown. She's a co-founder of Black Voters Matter. Um, I will We'll start out with you, Tia, since you're disadvantaged not being here with us. Um, might Georgia voters seriously send Herschel Walker to the Senate simply because once he was a good football player? I mean, I think it's it's been labeled, and I agree, it is the most competitive Senate race in America this fall. And it's not just that he's a football star. It's that, you know, Republicans in Georgia, yes, Democrats have had a lot of success, but Republicans have been running things in Georgia for, you know, a generation. And so there's a lot of national money that's going to be put behind Herschel Walker in hopes of convincing a majority of voters to support him. Yes, he is weak policy wise, but he is a megastar in Georgia. I mean, look, I have to say, when we say things like he's weak policy wise, um, I hear you, Tia. I have to say he is bad crazy, okay, because the things that he's saying are truly nonsensical. And the fact that people can leapfrog over common sense and elect this person because of fill in the blank, because of the courts, because of uh, gun rights legislation. Uh, Latasha, take a listen. He was asked by um, CNN's Manu Raju his thoughts on gun uh, legislation. Take a listen to his response. Do you support the new gun laws in the wake well, of this what Texas I like to do, What I like to do is see it and, uh, and everything and stuff. I like to see it. I have no idea what he's talking about, what he said. He'd like to see it and stuff like that. I'm curious from you, Latasha, um, when we think about ha having somebody like Herschel Walker square off with Raphael Warnock, what does the debate between these two even look like um, as the voters are still struggling with the rampant voter suppression happening in Georgia? You know, ironically, he's not saying anything. Yeah. You know, the the bottom line is the whole support for Herschel Walker is based on a Republican strategy to literally be able to peel off, to delude the, the black vote, to literally create this person who literally can't be controlled. Mm -hmm. The bottom line, there's no debate. That's why he's saying that he's not going to go in a debate. Mm -hmm. You know, he's simply a athlete who has done some business, and now he doesn't even have a clear political position that he can articulate. So this is just part of a, the yeah. Republican strategy to really be able to control and manipulate the election process. That's what they do. They, find, That's what they, they pluck do. one from the bunch and find this one to go out and say some dumb stuff so people can feel better about themselves. I'm not racist because I'm voting for this black idiot. You know, he's an idiot who happens to be black. And it's, we, it's so transparent. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we can see through that. I'm curious, though, voter suppression is such a big problem in Georgia. People look to organizations like Black Voters Matter uh, to leapfrog over the voter suppression there. What was the turnout like? Um, for early voting um, in this primary? Because you think about the people who vote in primaries are typically the extremists, the, right. the, the diehard people. Did we see that play out? You know, out what Georgia? was really um, interesting in this election in Georgia, there was, a, there was a, a, an increase in turnout across the board. What we did see is we actually saw young people did not come out in record numbers. What we saw is young people between 18 and 24 came out in like 2.6%, mm. and then up from 25 to 34 was almost 3%. That's 5%. And I think that that's saying a couple of things. One, I think that that's capturing some of the frustration that some of young voters are feeling that part of when they got engaged, when we think about it, many of those young voters got engaged after the George Floyd uprising, particularly right. first time voters. And so they've not seen any real comprehensive movement around police reform and criminal justice reform. And so I think that that's indicative to that. But I think a good sign is we did see turnout increase across the board. And so when we say that Georgia's hot, 
Georgia is really going to be hot this fall when, we, when it comes to this election. Well, we'll keep our eye on it, Tia. I want to ask you, um, what are you seeing on the ground in terms of turnout? Um, particularly, like I said, there's a lot of voter suppression uh, uh, happening. Um, and what is it telling us th that we should look out for come this November? Well, um, like Latasha said, turnout was a little bit lighter on the Democratic side, but that's a little bit to be expected because at the top of the Democratic ticket, there weren't competitive primaries. We knew Stacey Abrams was going to be the gubernatorial nominee. We knew Raphael Warnock was going to be the Senate nominee. But you still had record turnout, even though it was less on the Democratic side than on the Republican side. I do think, you know, as these issues are bubbling up, abortion, gun rights um, or gun control um, and the economy, there is going to be a lot of energy on the Democratic side that will help with turnout. But as Latasha said, there is a lot of frustration. And if Democrats don't give their base enough to say, yes, let me show up, I think they do run the risk of people staying home. Um, and as you mentioned, Senate Bill 202 continues to be a concern. Now, Republicans will say, look at the record turnout. That shows that all the concern about Senate Bill 202 was much ado about nothing. But that's a generalization and an oversimplification of the actual concerns that were raised. That's right. The concerns that were raised are about how Senate Bill 202 could affect a very close race by picking off people in the margins. For example, with the changes with early voting, with the changes with absentee voting, voting by mail, using drop boxes. If even if it just affects a few people, a relatively small amount of the electorate, could it be a game changer in a close race? And we expect Abrams v. Kemp to be close. We expect, well, there's a possibility that Walker versus Warnock could be close. That's when it can right. make a difference and on down, on down the ballot. Well, we will certainly uh, be watching. You know, Stacey Abrams was a, a firehouse in 2018 and was able to cast a wide net of influence not only in Georgia but across the country. So we will keep our eyes on Georgia. Thank you so much, Tia Mitchell, uh, for joining us. You'll definitely have to come back. And Latasha is sticking with us. I'm keeping her hostage here with me right on set. So be sure uh, to check out your uh, your plan, your or the NBC plan, uh, the vote tool, which is here to help you successfully cast your ballot in midterm elections. Get key information on the voting rules where you live, including registration deadlines, mail-in voting options, what to bring with you on Election Day, and more. Don't get caught slipping. Head to NBCNews.com slash plan your vote now. Speaking of voting, legendary rapper Luther, Uncle Luke Campbell, recently trended on Twitter after asking why black people should vote in the next election. That turned a lot of heads, so we're going to dig into that after the break. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 